What exactly is going on in the Somali refugee camps? A month ago, the European Union announced the suspension of its aid to the country due to allegations of misappropriation. Specifically, UN investigators discovered that funds intended for the most vulnerable refugees were being misspent by landowners, local authorities, members of the security forces, and even aid workers. 80% of European aid was prepaid and has already been disbursed. Our correspondent in Somalia, Abdul Qadir Fudey, reports on the situation of the refugees who could have done without this new scandal. Take a look. The drought in Somalia has left many people in the IDP camps near Mogadishu struggling to survive. With humanitarian aid running low, long-established families have started small businesses to cope with the crisis. They don't expect to earn a lot of money, but even $2 a day can make a difference for those who face harsh conditions and limited assistance. Running a business in a weak economy is not easy. Customers are scarce and sometimes there are no sales at all. It takes a lot of perseverance and patience to keep going. I have seven children and since we don't have anything else, we managed to make a living from this. We previously fled the drought in Kurtonwari district and we also need urgent aid because this is not enough to support seven children. So we please our brothers to help us. Abdulli, who has become the breadwinner after separating from her husband, can now manage to cook something for her children by the end of the day. For her, feeding the family is of paramount importance. She undertakes a task that is challenging for many others in the same camp. The drought crisis in the Horn of Africa nation has worsened as more families arrive at the camp, hoping to find water and food. However, they could face a shortage of aid as the European Union has halted its humanitarian support after a UN report revealed corruption and mismanagement of the funds meant for the drought victims. The UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs UNOCHA, reported in August that the number of people affected by severe drought increased from 7.8 million in January to 8.3 million in March 2023. There is nothing to eat here and we are hungry. From the morning until this time, we didn't eat. That is our situation. We need help and an urgent one. We only rely on water. We are here for seven days. I fled the drop with my ten children. No water, no food, and we are also sick. And we can't get medicine here. No shelter as well. We face a lot of problems, so help us. The camp leaders who oversee the distribution of aid and assist the newcomers to settle in warn the situation will deteriorate further if no additional aid arrives. No organization helped these people. We request our Muslim brothers and humanitarian agencies to aid them. They don't have shelter, they don't have food and water, and no health care for the sick ones. These camps on the outskirts of the capital are hosted by private landowners who welcome those escaping the drought. They usually receive help from the UN and Arab humanitarian agencies. The authorities are relying on the aid from those organizations and the local businessmen. Officials from the Somali Disaster Management Agency say the government is committed to doing everything in its path to help those in need. Somali government generally contributes according to its capacity to help those people. There is little due to the economic challenges in the country, but we help them in our ability. This humanitarian limited support caused a huge effect. As you know, there is food price hiking in the world because of Ukraine-Russia war. 
And to top it all off, floods plague Somalia in the harvest season. In the face of limited humanitarian support and economic conditions that hamper the ability of the Somali government to provide necessary assistance, the hopes of people like Abdule remain limited to earning $2 per day to bring joy to her children.